guys! I'm so glad to be back and sharing Valentine's Day crafts for you guys. And I do have some Valentine candy holders today, and I'm getting these out early so that you will have plenty of time to get these ready for Valentine's Day. So to get started, make sure to grab these free SVG files from my blog at svgnation.com, and there is a link in the video description that's going to take you directly there, so you can click there. And then there's two different file types. There's the one with the closing mechanism and then the regular. So I'll kind of show you what to do with both of those. I'll go ahead and start with the regular one. And I'm going to add that to my canvas right there. And so once you have that uploaded, add that to your canvas as well. And you want to ungroup all of your layers. And I'm just going to zoom out so you can see all of these characters a little better. Okay, so in this design, you'll notice that there's a heart and a circle option for each design. Um, so that's just if you have the circle ornaments and you want to make the circle version, you can. But the heart looks so cute for the Valentine's Day one, so I do recommend doing the heart. And with these files, there's no modifications needed. Um, like if you don't want to make the circle one, you can just click on it and you can just delete it out of there. You can hit delete on your keyboard or click delete right there. Or you can hide it. Um, that way your Cricut's not going to cut it. Um, and this right here, this is just a bow, which is optional. It looks cute to add to the teddy bear, but if you don't want that, you can just delete that. Or if you want to change the color of it, just click right here to change the color. Um, one thing I am doing with the frog is right here, you're going to see, if you look at all the layers of the frog, there's three different greens in the frog. If you don't have three different greens, then that's fine. You can actually make this layer right here. I'm going to ungroup these so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, oh, got that. There we go. Let me line those up. Okay, so this green right here can be the same green as this. You do still want to cut the two individual pieces because that's going to kind of give it a little 3D effect with the front legs going over the back legs. So what I'm going to do is go to my color sink right here. And this green right here, I'm just going to drag it onto this green right here because I'm just going to cut those all the same. I thought I had three different greens, but I didn't like the way they went together, so I'm just going to use two for that. Um, but other than that, there's no edits that you need to make to this. You can go ahead and click on make it, but I do want to show you what to do with the one with the closing mechanism as well before we get started. So I'm just going to click on all of these and just remove these real quick from my screen. And we're going to upload the one with the closing mechanism. Okay, so for this one, again, there's no edits needed except for the closing mechanism. Um, let's start off by ungrouping. You're going to need all three of these pieces for one of these. So if you're doing this for all three, you are going to need to select all these layers. And you can just click on them while holding down shift to select them all. And then just go right here and you're going to duplicate those. And you also want to change the color of it. Um, so I like to make the closing mechanism the same color as the base. So I'll just go right here to my color sink. And let's see, where are these? So I'll just take these three pieces right here. Uh, you will have to click on them individually. It won't let you hold shift to select them. And I'm just going to drag them right here in the red that is the base of my gnome. And then for these ones, I'm just going to drag them right down here, which is the pink for my teddy bear. And you can do the same thing for the frog. You would just select these and just duplicate those. Um, the duplicate is up here in the layers at the top. And then you can go back in your color sink right here. And I'm going to drag those to that dark green layer. I'm going to close some of these to make it easier to find that dark green layer. Okay, so we can now drag our There we go. So now I've got a closing mechanism for each one of these. And you can also go in your colors to change those, but you do want to make sure it is the exact color. So by doing the color sync, it's going to select the right color for you. So everything is ready. Um if you wanted to make a couple of each kind, you can upload those and add those here too. Um, but we're just going to go to make it. And in case any of you guys just got a Cricut for Christmas, I'll walk you through a few of the steps. Um, so right here, this is going to show how your paper is going to cut. 
Um, for me right now, I'm actually using a letter size for the white. So you're going to go into your material size right here. And you're going to change that if you need to. If you're using 12 by 12, you don't need to. But for me, I do need to change this to the letter size. And that is going to change anything that's on white paper. Now, if any, all the rest of my paper is 12 by 12. But if you need to adjust any of your sizes, um, then go ahead and do that. And you can see right here, this shows you exactly how it's going to cut. Your first mat, you're going to need to place your white paper on. And I'll have to do that actually for my first three mats for this. And then I'm going to switch it to my black paper my tan paper, and it shows you the order. So we're just gonna click back at the top and you're gonna click on continue. And go ahead and connect your machine. And then you're gonna set your base material. Um, if you have like the Air Explorer 2, you have to put this on custom to get this. I do prefer to select it here than on the dial. Um, I actually already have mine like bookmarked right here, but you can click browse all materials to find the material that you're looking for. And I am using right here, this 80 pound medium cardstock and done. And if you find that's not cutting right or you need it to cut a little bit deeper, you can go right here and change the pressure to more, but the default works really good for me. Um, so I'm gonna stick with default. So before we cut our candy holders, I realized that I forgot to show you how to resize these in case you have a different size ornament than I am using. Um, so I wanna show you how to do that real quick. And you're gonna use these same steps whether you're doing the gnome, the frog, or the teddy bear. So I'm just gonna show you with the gnome. So the first thing you wanna do for the circle one is start off by adding a circle shape. And you wanna take your ornament and you wanna measure the opening um, from one side to the other. And on your ornament, there is a little tab piece. Do not include the tab piece in your measurements, just that open area. So if you have a two and a half by two and a half inch circle, we're gonna change the size of this to two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And if you have your proportions unlocked, then you'll need to add it in for both the height and width, but it's already locked in there. So now I'm just gonna move this circle right here on top and I'm gonna click on my gnome and I'm gonna resize that so that it fits perfectly within the circle. And you really want a perfect fit on that because you wanna make sure that it holds the ornament in place. So once you have that resized, you can go ahead and delete that circle because you won't need it. And now your gnome is sized perfectly for if you have the two and a half inch ornament or whatever size you made it. And we're gonna do the same thing with the heart. The heart's not gonna line up perfectly so what you're going to want to do is go ahead and unlock your proportions and measure your heart so it fits the best that it can, paying attention that the biggest areas are in the correct spot. If everything else doesn't line up perfectly, that's fine. Just try to keep this to this lined up the best that you can. And so that's pretty good right there. So once you do that, go ahead and lock those proportions back. And again, you're going to measure your heart from the biggest area, like right across this area. And this is where you're gonna get your measurements for how to resize this. So we're just gonna say that this area is two and a half inches wide. And so you're gonna change your width and make sure that this is locked so that it changes properly. So we're just gonna change that. And now again, we're just gonna click on our gnome and resize it. And when you're resizing your gnome, make sure that the proportions are locked so that everything stays properly in place um, and the sizes it needs. Um, but go ahead and measure that to get this part aligned the best that you can. Again, this heart's not going to be the perfect shape of the other heart, but that's okay. This is just for sizing references. And now you can delete that when you're done and your gnome can now fit a smaller heart ornament. Okay, so now you're just going to prepare your mat by placing the first color that you need on it and make sure that you press the paper down really well so that it doesn't move while you're cutting because this will mess up your design completely. And the brayer tool really helps with this, especially as your mats are getting less sticky. So if you've been wondering if you should get one of these, then I say the answer is yes. I love this little tool. Um, and then you're going to load your mat into your Cricut by just pressing on that flashing green button with your mat in there and that's going to load everything. And then once that's loaded, you're just gonna press on the flashing Cricut button for everything to start cutting. And then once your Cricut has finished cutting on the first sheet, you're gonna notice it's gonna stop and you're just gonna press on that flashing green arrow to unload your mat. And then you're gonna load the next mat that you see on the preview screen. And once that mat is loaded, you're just gonna press the flashing Cricut button again to continue with your cutting.
And you're going to continue to repeat the steps until you've cut all of your pieces. And if you have more than one mat, then it really does help to prepare your next mat while the other one is cutting. And so this way you can kind of keep things going. And if you're new to working with paper, then make sure that when you remove the paper from your mat, that you roll the mat off your paper. And you're going to need to press down on the paper as you roll the mat off of it. And this is going to keep your paper from curling or ripping, and it's going to give you the best results. And this is how you always want to remove paper anytime you have paper with your mat. And then once everything is cut out, go ahead and line your pieces up. Um, and you're going to line them up just as you see them in Cricut Design Space. So if you aren't sure how to line them up, you can just look in, look in there and see how they're lined up. And we're going to start with the gnome. So for the gnome, you're going to set aside your bottom layer. And this is the layer that has the perforation lines. Or if you've got like the closing mechanism version, it's going to be the layer that has the hole in it. Um, but I'm going to show you how to actually attach the closing mechanism a little bit later. Um, so first, we're going to start with the ones with the perforation lines. Um, so now you're just going to glue all the other pieces of your gnome together. So you're going to start with gluing the pink layer on top of the tan layer and then the white layer on top of your pink layer. And make sure that you line the pieces up before adding your glue um, so that you don't put the glue on the wrong side. And you're gonna to wanna to do this for all of them. Just make sure it lines up properly before adding that glue. And then once your gnome is glued together, you're gonna add your candy inside of your ornament and then you're gonna place this on the bottom piece of your gnome. And it doesn't have to be in the exact spot because you're gonna be able to move it around as needed as you place everything together. Um, so just kind of put it where you think it goes. And make sure that if you are using the heart ornament that you used the heart file and the same for the circle. And now you're just gonna add foam dots or you can even use foam tape to your gnome. And make sure that you add them around where the ornament goes as well because this is gonna really help to keep that tight and secure in there. And it's actually going to be easier to place these on the other piece of your gnome so that you can line them up with the heart cutouts, um, which I know I'm putting them on the bottom piece, um, but you'll see how I have to move some around at the end. Um, so just remove the backing from your foam dots or your foam tape and then line the top part up over the bottom part over the ornament. And you can kind of slide everything around and make sure it's in place before you press down. Um, and the cutout is going to be a tight fit around your ornament. Um, but you do want that so that it holds it in place well. So just make sure that as you press down, you press down really well to make sure those foam dots get attached. And then if you have any pieces of foam showing, you can just remove those or move those around. Um, but if you place them on the top layer, you're not going to have that issue, which I did for the rest of them. I just didn't think about it for this one. Um, and then you're going to actually assemble the teddy bear the same way. The frog's going to be slightly different, so make sure to keep watching um, because I'll show you how to attach those and also how to do the closing mechanism version. Um, but for the teddy bear, you're just going to glue the white layer on top of the black layer and then your tan layer on top of the white layer. And you can use any colors for the teddy bears. Like they look really cute, pink, blue, or purple. So you definitely do not have to use the colors I'm using here. Get super creative and personalize it for each person you're making it for. Um, but once all the pieces are glued together, you're going to add your candy to your ornament and place it on the bottom layer. And then you'll add your foam strips or foam dots. And then you're just going to place everything in place and press down. Um, so this time you see I added the foam dots to the top layer. So it was a lot easier to line up and I didn't have to move any around at the end. So I recommend doing it this way. Um, and there is a bow included in the file in case you want to add these to any of your characters. And I do think it looks really cute on the teddy bear. And if you want to use this to assemble it, you're just going to fold in the two pieces so they kind of overlap in the middle. And I think it's easiest to use hot glue for gluing this down because it sticks really quick. Um, so it's going to take its shape really quick and you don't have to sit there and hold it. And then you're just going to wrap the rectangle piece around the middle and then glue it to that bottom bow layer. And then you can attach the bow to your teddy bear or any other character you want to use it for. And you can use this bow for anything, so you can resize it if you have a different project you want to use it for. Um, it's just a standard bow template. And when you assemble your frog, it is very similar to assemble it. Um, the only difference is that you're going to glue the bottom two layers together instead of just having that one bottom layer. And so then to assemble the rest of the frog, you're just going to glue that white layer on top of the black layer. 
and then you're going to add your pink layer on top and then your green layer on top. So there's just a couple extra layers of the frog, but it's super cute and totally worth it. And then you're going to add candy to your ornament and your foam dots and assemble everything together. And you're going to notice these really do hold really well, so there's no need to glue them down at all. Um, but if you want to, you can add a little bit of glue to the bottom of the ornament. There's really no need, but if it makes you feel like they'll hold better, then you can go ahead and do that. And now if you're making the candy holder with a closing mechanism, um, you're only going to be able to make this one with the round ornament. Um, I've only got that version available. But to assemble this, um, first you're going to start with assembling the characters just as we walked through already. And go ahead and leave the top and bottom pieces unattached. Don't attach those yet. And then you're going to flip that bottom piece over and line your closing mechanism pieces up. So you're going to place a piece with the arrow so it lines up with the cutout on the back of your character. And make sure that you have it to where the cutout is covered so you have the closing mechanism and the arrow facing that way. And then you're going to take that round piece and place it between the candy holder and your closing mechanism. And then you're going to take the piece with the tabs and place that on top. And you want to place the tab piece so that the open area lines up with where you need the lever to pull down for your closing mechanism. And now you're just going to add a tiny bit of glue to each of your tabs and then pull those closing mechanisms down so that you can hold that middle in place. And you really do not want to use too much glue because you don't want it to seep in because that middle piece needs to remain completely unattached. So once you have that glued together, go ahead and glue your closing mechanism to the back of your candy holder. And when you glue it down, make sure that you glue it down so that the hole lines up with the closing mechanism. So when you pull the lever down, you want it to uncover the hole. And then when you pull it back up, you want it to cover the hole. So once that is in place and dry, you can go ahead and finish assembling the candy holders. And you'll do that just by adding your foam dots and your ornament and go ahead and attach the layers together. Um, but for this version, you're going to be able to wait to add your candy until everything is assembled. Um, so you'll just open up the mechanism and add your candy in and then close it back up. And you're going to repeat these same steps for assembling the closing mechanism on the frog and teddy bear as well. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoy these candy holders, and I love seeing all the crafts that you guys have been tagging me in, so please keep that up. It makes me really excited to see those, or even emailing me them if you aren't on social media, um, that way I can share them with everybody. And if you're here watching, make sure to say hi in the comments and leave me a like. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments, and I'll answer them there. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!